Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So, uh, today's video is going to start a little bit different, and it's not exactly going to be a sketchbook doodles video per se. As you can see, I do have my sketchbook out here right now, but we're not going to be technically sketching too, too much uh, for the entire session because I actually wanted to show you guys kind of like the planning and kind of like the setup for a painting session. So I have a sketch right here of Tsukasa Suo and he is, I believe he's the leader of Knights and Knights is a part of Ensemble Stars. Um, yeah, I've been playing Ensemble Stars a little bit more recently and I got Tsukasa Suo kind of more recently compared to the other five stars that I have. Um, but yeah, I really like him. I think he's really cute and seems really sweet. So I kind of wanted to draw him. So I doodled in my sketchbook, not thinking too much about it, but I really like the sketch and I kind of want to do more painting. So um, I'm going to take a picture of the sketch a little bit later, but first I wanted to do some thumbnailing so that I could figure out how I wanted to do the background. Because I wanted to do like a simple background with like a wide open window or something and then having flowers and leaves kind of surrounding the window in a sense but I didn't want the window to be like smacked right in the middle so yeah now that I have that settled I am just going to take a photo I'm going to send that to myself and then I'm going to go print that off um, after we do some editing first so uh, we're not going to need my sketchbook for now I might reference it from time to time for when I'm painting but for now we're going to move on to my iPad so I'm gonna do this on my iPad just because it's easier. Usually I would do this in like uh, Clip Studio Paint or in Paint Tools I. So all I'm gonna do is import that photo that I took and we're gonna resize it onto a canvas that's pretty much like close to my paper size. So I'm gonna be using a eight and a half by 11 or about like a four size paper for painting. So that's what I have my page set to. I am playing around with kind of like the curves so that we can brighten up my whites and darken um, my pencil lines so that when I start to print off the sketch, it'll be easier for me to see because I need to transfer my sketch to watercolor paper. So uh, before we do printing and stuff, I'm, I basically got rid of the background first and then now I am adding any extra things to the sketch before we print it off. So I decided that I wanted his arm to be on a table rather than being completely floating. I added the windowsill, or like the window panel, I guess, and then I'm adding some color so that I have a general color comp prior to painting. Because initially I was planning to do this as a gouache painting session, but I don't know if it's the paper I'm using. It's like, a fairly light I don't know if it's like a mixed media paper or just like a rougher toothed paper or it's watercolor paper I'm not too sure I bought it like years ago um, back when I was in university and I was doing some watercolor paper testing and I have like two sheets of this arches I'm assuming it's watercolor paper uh, but yeah that's what I'm using right now so you see I printed off my sketch on normal printer paper and then I set that behind the watercolor paper that I'm using with a little light table or light pad, I am now transferring my lines. I am using the uh, Prismacolor Cold Erase so that we could have kind of like lighter and warmer lines prior to painting. But you're gonna see that uh, for my gouache painting, I, for some reason I was struggling more than when I usually paint in my sketchbook. And like I said, it might be because the paper absorbs water really weirdly as well as it absorbs the paint in a weird way so i'll just talk about this painting portion because i'm gonna do this like probably several times um so yeah i am basically gonna wet the whole page now i know some people soak the whole paper and then staple it to like a masonite board or something so that the paper is pre-stretched but i do not have that luxury to do that so i decided that i'm just gonna paint the whole thing uh, with one color first and then add in my background colors and this is what we have with the like just the watercolor pass and here's my gouache set i was gonna make this the video where i show you guys my water or like my 
gouache palette while I mix and paint but because the painting did not go as planned I am actually going to abandon this you can see that I started to do the background try to figure out how I wanted to have the colors set with in mind the color comp that I did earlier so I wanted things to be a little bit on the lighter side and a little bit more warmer and I kind of throw this color scheme or like more airier color palette out the window when I start doing watercolor because I got too uh, painting happy I guess because I just had fun painting so much so yeah let's go on to the watercolor session instead and this is going to be done all in time lapse so I can thoroughly go through everything so initially I start off with a giant I think it's like a two inch I think right let me take a quick look yeah, I have a 2 inch Pro Art uh, 8718 Hake brush, and I usually use that to apply any bigger washes. Um, yeah, I used to have a bigger one, and we used to use it for applying gesso to our paper or our boards or our canvases because it's quite soft. Um, but I have this clean one, so I use it for watercolor washes. So I laid out a uh, yellow wash and then I added some blue and some green into the background. Now I noticed that it wasn't to the intensity that I wanted so you can see that I'm using my, I think it's, this is like a sumi brush to add more of the colors in and because I was working at night I actually thought it looked a lot warmer but um, now I realize it wasn't actually as warm as I would have liked so I kind of wish I played up the intensity of that yellow um, of like my first pass a lot darker so that we could have more of a warmer atmosphere but I think it's okay I think it turned out fine in the end not exactly like super warm but I think the colors looked okay so uh, in between large washes I would actually use the hair dryer to make sure that the page is completely flat before I actually start painting um, suo first so um, let me think I'm kind of like I'm gonna lose track of things to talk uh, to talk about but uh, the watercolor paper is Strathmore, I believe 400 series cold press and it's 300 GSM. So it's a super thick paper and I just have like a whole gigantic roll of it. So the paper is curved, but I had to also transfer my lines once again. So luckily I still had that sketch uh, ready to go. So I just transferred it with a normal HB pencil so that we could have some lines that won't uh, get covered too much or wash away the more layers I add with watercolor. So like I said, added a few washes first to kind of to establish the color of the background prior to doing uh, the figure. And then I was really excited to do mostly the hair because that's what made me want to watercolor this so much because I actually liked how I did the hair during the color comp. It just looked really fun and kind of vibrant with the yellows and reds. So this is what I wanted to do. And then the rest of the colors, so there is quite a bit of white in his outfit as well as kind of more of a, almost like a navy blue or ultramarine. And then he's a little bit of black and a lot of gold. So yeah, I tried my best to keep um, things on the lighter side, but you can see that I keep playing up the intensity of the background more and more just because I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more vibrant. So I was trying my best. Mm. I think I might have to search it up but it's been a while since I've done any watercolor painting but ever since I did that old sketchbook tours and seeing my old uh, watercolor sketchbook I kind of actually miss painting and I always say like watercolor is actually one of my favorite medium and I still think it is is just my patience for it is gone a little low and I haven't taken the time just to sit down and paint like it's just a good session of painting this is fairly close there's a lot of things like I feel like I rushed um, in order to have enough time to record a video so maybe in the future I will just do some sessions on my own and then maybe when I get more comfortable I'll do more painting videos again because initially when I started this channel I actually did a lot more watercolor painting and sketching and stuff like traditional medium um, but then I think quarantine hit and that's when I started doing like a lot more digital mm, okay so let me talk about the hair so I actually did I think three passes for the hair at this point I did a kind of like a orangey yellow to establish where the highlights were and then kind of have a warmer rim of light 
well, I'm adding the fourth layer at this point. Um, but then after that, I did a softer layer of red. And I think I did one more to the, the right side so that it could be a little bit darker. And then you just saw me do another layer of red and then one more layer with kind of like a burgundy purple color so I could push the shadows a little bit. So I'm just playing with the hair color by dragging more red from each of the like, little tips and stuff. Just to make sure that I have some harsher, um, sharper edges near the top and then as it gradually gets lower to the face, I kind of like smooth it out and kind of like fade it out so that's a lot softer. And yeah, I think hair is just like my favorite part of the paint. Um, I don't usually paint it like this. Sometimes I uh, try to put um, a lot of like more of a wet wash down and then try to jam in, as, like, jam in as much color as I can and then do a second and third layer just to play up the intensity. But this one I just kind of did more planning so I could have a little bit more of a color shift but I didn't make it like entirely smooth this time. I think because I haven't used this paper recently, I've been struggling using it a little bit because I actually made things a little bit more patchy because I forgot it kind of gets a little bit patchy sometimes, um, especially if I don't use a lot of water and just let it dry naturally. So if I start to scrub the paint or drag the paint down, it kind of gives like a little bit of a patchy look. Um, and sometimes I can use that for my advantage, but you know, for the most part when I'm working like on the face, sometimes I want it to be as smooth as I can and then yeah, I'm just realizing I made his eyes a little bit too dark and a little bit too um, large compared to his face. I think because in the editing process, I was kind of like shaving down his face because it was a little bit too lopsided. And now I think the one side that I was shaving down is a little bit too thinned out. That's kind of, kind of annoying, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, I just wanted him to be in like a peaceful, kind of like cafe but like in a garden setting i believe there's a card that looks kind of similar it's a card that's been like released recently for him i believe like it was released this year and it was paired with like a bunch of purple flowers which is what i tried to put in the background as well um and i just decided like i decided to draw him in his um usual knight's uniform i believe um but there's like other outfits that I like a lot more than this one. I've been sketching him a little bit in my sketchbook here and there just because like I think he's really cute. So yeah, I think him and Hiro are probably my favorites probably. I would like to try painting or drawing Kaz Kazehaya, I think that's his name. It's basically the priest guy. Um, yeah, I would like to. I love his color scheme a lot, so I kind of want to give that a go. Because I think I said in a different video that red hair is very hard for me to paint or color. So I think um, Kazehaya's hair is also going to be hard for me. Even though it's not red, it is more of a like mint-ish color or turquoise color. I don't get a lot of opportunity to paint that color. So I think it would be very interesting. So... One thing I really don't like about this piece though is the foliage. So because it was kind of last minute, I did not really do any research on kinds of plants. I kind of just drew from my brain. And because of that, I kind of lost the form of the flowers themselves. I think in my sketch, they look um, a lot prettier, but when I did the washes, I think I just lost the form a lot. So I didn't know which way the petals were curving. So they don't read very three dimensional. They're kind of flat and kind of just dull. So I don't really like it, but you know, it fits um, enough so that it's not too in focus anyways. And then I added some more faint petals and then faint flowers in the background as well so that we could have a little bit more color here and there, especially with the pink and like pinkish purple. Uh, let me think. What else is there to talk about? I think what helps this a lot is the actual line work um, afterwards because it, I don't know. I had a lot of fun painting his like hair and kind of his face and stuff, but I think his outfit could have benefited from me doing more wet on wet washes prior to separating the color so uh, defined because I feel like without the line work, it looks very messy and very like haphazardly kind of painted. That's kind of my opinion on it, but you know, that's okay. There's this stuff I want to improve on because I like a lot of my old watercolor pieces, but not a lot of my newer ones. And I've been struggling trying to figure out why. 
I don't know if it's my expectations or because I stopped painting for quite a while so I lost a lot of that um, patience as well as just general muscle memory from painting. Um, yeah, so I was talking about the paper earlier. Uh, yeah, this paper is cold press and for the longest time I've used only cold press but I think the last few paintings that I did prior to this one were actually on hot press paper and it definitely reacts a little bit differently and it dries a lot more quicker so yeah this was just it was just fun to do I don't know it's just for me I needed to probably revisit watercolor a little bit more and I probably will in the future if I can I'll just have to plan out more sessions for myself because um, I really miss it it's just fun to play around with color and um, do you like the preliminary planning for it I think is also fun because I usually like um, being a little bit more thorough and kind of detailing what I need to do so that the piece comes out the way I wanted it to and I feel like this lacked some paint like planning prior to painting especially like the window part um, I swapped the colors for the chair and I didn't really like it as much but I'm gonna darken the back part of his chair cushion thing so that it will kind of match the overall color scheme because I don't really like that it's kind of like this weird faded gray color so I'm gonna change it to the like a dark blue so it matches a little bit better with the color palette um yeah just had him with a little kind of like parfait him eating because I believe he has a sweet tooth or he stress eats I believe so yeah I thought that was kind of cute that he's so fond of sweets though so dream with a little bit of sweets and Fun fact, when I first looked at Knights, because Knights is actually the group from Ensemble Stars that I like the most based off of their songs. Um, I think it's them and Undead had the songs that I liked the most. Um, but yeah, I out of their designs, I actually thought Suho's design was a little bit plain uh, compared to the other members but that's okay um I am fully and full-heartedly attached to this guy now so yeah he's like my second son I guess for ensemble stars I have Hiro like Hiro and then I have now Suho so yeah just precious dudes and I just like I like drawing uh, Suo a lot more than I do like drawing Hiro. I haven't really doodled Hiro like all that much. I doodled Su like Suo a lot more. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because this design's a little bit more simple. So I'm just showing you guys that I taped off the borders and then, whoa, I guess I knocked my mic. Uh, but yeah, uh, the borders are fairly clean. I decided to use this green masking tape. I've used like washi tapes in the past or like some other masking tapes. Some of them rip the page and then some of the washi tape um, doesn't adhere the paper down fully. But luckily, even though this paper is usually like heavily curved, um, after doing like several washes on the entire background, it actually became super flat. So that's quite nice. I'm just using my kneaded eraser to get rid of some of the pencil marks because I didn't really plan the border out too nicely. And there's the gouache piece that I, I stopped kind of partway through. I, I forgot to add more blush to his face. So I'm doing that by adding and smudging in some of this uh, red pencil. And then that's it. Um, there is the end and maybe in the future I'll do more videos like this where I show you guys the full process or as much as the process as I can and I'll try to do an actual full gouache piece in the future maybe a little bit smaller um, so I can fit the palette in the camera view as well but yeah there is the comparison I actually like my sketch more than the painting I think it's also because of the face shape but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and I will talk to you guys next time bye